Today I'm doing a small collage in my Soho journal. Let's take a look. Okay, welcome back friends. I'm going to try to do a quick collage today um, in my little Soho um, brick mixed media book. This is a five and a half by five and a half. This, you know, I think it's a perfect size for people who are just beginning to play with um, collage. And I just love it because I can, I can work on these things fast. I don't have to find a million papers. I can do something more minimalist, which is what I'm kind of leaning towards more these days, even though they come out kind of busy like this because the papers are are busy sometimes you know in this case the papers were busy so the end result was busy um this was a little more minimalist but still it's only like one paper actually there was like some deli paper on top it looks like so maybe one two three four pieces of paper in this case, it was one, two, three, four pieces of paper. So today we're probably going to also do four pieces of paper. So a few weeks ago, I was, I was um, doing some rubber bands and I was using a rice paper pad that I'm, I'm just trying to use up um, to brayer off. And so you could see these beautiful colors when I went to brayer off the excess blue, or it was possibly when I was doing the white, I still had a little blue and um, quinacridone red on my brayer and I got this beautiful um, sheet that I just thought, oh my God, I have to save that. And of course they look beautiful together. So I don't want, I've been saving them like kind of like somewhere where I would see them all the time so that I would remember to do this. And um, I don't want them to get buried in the bottom of a bunch of papers and then I completely forget about it. So yeah, definitely um, I love all the shapes that are going on here. I have to find the exact spot that I want to uh, cut out of here. And then I'm probably on the other spread and they might go the other way. Um, on this spread, I might introduce another color. So I had this yellow green going on in the background. It's like more detail kind of thing. So here's the green, but then I also have the quinacridone red and that introduces another, another pattern. So we've got a very subtle, we have busy, and then this is kind of like somewhere in between. Um, I'm not sure yet whether it's going to be the green or the red. I pulled this out because of the green, but then I wasn't sure. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look. Now, the other thing I could do is maybe cut a circle out of here, out of the green, use the red. Um, so all of these things are possibilities. Um, the other thing I might just do is I have this piece of, I think this is wet strength tissue that I cut a circle out of that has, you know, all of these colors in it. So that's another possibility, but definitely these two papers are getting used. I'm using my gel medium that is slightly watered down, not, not watered down much, but slightly. And I'm still not really sure. Now I'm from the world of graphic design, actually specifically advertising. And when we would buy a spread, um, not a spread in a magazine, but a single page, we would always want the right hand side. And why is that? <laughs> so, because that's where our eye, at least as we're turning the pages of a book, that's where your eye goes first. The left-hand side pages are actually cheaper. 
and they're easier to get. You have to order that right hand side really early if, in order to guarantee that you're gonna get that. Unless you're a really good monthly customer, you know, but the fashion magazines, you, you have to be in that magazine every single month to be guaranteed a right hand side. Um, but we, we almost always got a right hand side because we would order well in advance. So I want my real focal, which is this, to be on the right hand side. And then the left hand side, we'll see what we're gonna do. But anyway, that's, that's why I tend to um, really spend a lot more time probably on the right. I, maybe, maybe I break that rule sometimes, but today that's what I'm thinking. So I'm trying to figure out exactly, I, want a, I definitely want a little bit of the red but this, as we get further to the edge of the page, I find it less exciting. So, but I do want this part that has, it also has the purples in between. So I definitely want a little bit of that. So I'm thinking more like this kind of composition. Yeah, that's probably good right there. So my, let's just try to do a very fine line so I know where to cut. And we'll start by cutting there. Then we'll figure out top and bottom because so the other thing with the top and bottom, yeah. So I'm just gonna notch the corner. Let's see if I can see that notch I just made. Here it is, okay. So I'm gonna line that up with one of these lines. close enough. All right. So at least I know, at least from that corner out, I know how I'm positioning. Now, of course, I still have another piece here. I could just use that piece on this end along with this. I kind of want to, it, it seems to be flowing this way. So I want to come, come from here, but I don't know if I want to go all the way to this edge or further in. So I'm not really sure. Let's see if we can play with a piece of paper. Okay, like do I want to do that? I think so. Not 100% sure about that, so I'm going to start there. We'll see. We still feel that way. So this is rice paper, but it's thicker. Um, this is rice paper, and it's a lot thinner. This is, um, I think, wet strength tissue. Yeah, see all of this and this, it's kind of bothering me. So I think I need to come in better already I can tell I 
and so I need about this much of something else. So I'm going to first cut a little bit of this um, green. See, I'm not liking these two colors together at least not so dominant. And this is so delicate here, I think I just need a little piece of this. So I'm thinking that this might be better. And I'm gonna go with the stronger color on this side. And then maybe a circle of this or is this circle better let's decide that after we get everything glued down trimmed up I'm going to start by gluing down this side go from the center out. I'm going to just go off the edge slightly up at the top. I must have had some paint on my brush. I didn't realize it. So I do want to go over the top again, but it's got paint. So I'm going to have to use a different one, hopefully. a little smaller than I wanted. And I just Okay, it looks like it's curling, but it will flatten when as it dries. At least that's been my experience with this paper. So I have to decide, I don't want it to go beyond here, so I'm thinking of lining this up here. Or maybe I want a little bit of this bottom piece. Wow. I think that's good. And I have to go as close to the edge as I can. Because it's the gutter, I have to really make sure I get into that gutter. And it's a much thicker paper, so it's going to behave differently.
All right, I'm going to let this dry completely. And then we will come in with our with our red. I'm liking this already. And then we're going to reintroduce a circle. And I'm not exactly sure how yet. Another thing, there's all kinds of ideas floating in my head, um, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. So one step at a time, I like to make sure this is completely dry, dry before I start layering it. Okay, so I'm gonna try. This, this is rice paper, thin rice paper. So somebody told me that if you, you could use one of these cutters, if you put it between two pieces of copy paper. So we're gonna try that. Problem is I'm not gonna be able to see if I'm cutting a full circle or not. Let me see how far. Hmm. I don't think I wanna go all the way. I'm gonna kind of back off just slightly. And look what we got. Okay, so that worked. And I'm not really sure that that's the color. So I'm going to cut another one. So I cannot remember who told me about that little trick, but uh, thank you very much. It's almost dry, so I'm gonna start trimming it up. So see how much flatter it is? All right, so while I was waiting for it to dry, I was uh, I was looking at pa these papers that were laying on the desk. And one of the pieces that I cut, I think I cut off from here, which is this piece. I think it was cut off here, yeah. Um, I started thinking maybe it would be good over here almost as a barrier between this paper and this paper. And then, I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but possibly one, both, or even this one. But again, until everything is like down and I can actually visualize it better, um, I'm not gonna not gonna play with it just yet. So let's try to get this in position. I really love some of these uh, quinacridone red pieces that are showing through the sort of uh, it, it's a white background but it's got many many colors in it so it's kind of a bluish white uh, in some areas a pinkish white okay so now we can go all the way to the edge
Okay, so let's, I think it's coming together. This is kind of starting to look like clouds to me. So this is the actual way that composition is going to be. I don't want to cover this up. So that whole idea of putting in a circle, um, I don't know if that's going to work. That might work. And then I I don't know if I'm gonna use this now. I don't know. But I'm liking the way these kind of intersect here. I'm gonna put that down. I'm making a decision. And that's, that might be all it needs. I just wanted to introduce this green somehow. But maybe what I'm not liking about it is it's perfect circle. Maybe we just need one perfect circle. Maybe we don't need it at all. corner is still bothering me. Is that the same color? Yep. I think I'm going to patch it a little right here. 
just that white blob is bothering me. I've minimized it a bit. All right, so I'm going to let these things dry. We'll trim it up and then I think it's done. I, lo I still absolutely love this paper. And I still have bits of this paper that I can still use. So I will definitely keep my little trimmings. I should even keep this little skinny thing. Can I not leave well enough alone? No, I cannot. Okay. <laughs> I cannot leave it alone. better. For now. And now we wait for it to dry. And uh, I, I just love these colors. Hopefully I put this thing on straight because that will look really weird if it's not. All right. Well, let, I'm going to be patient, let it dry, and then we will come back and trim it up. Okay, part of this is still drying, so it's curling up a little bit, but I absolutely love it. I may feel differently later, but <laughs> right now I'm loving it. Part of it is I just love the uh, this paper and this paper. I, I, I'm in love with anything that's involving a rubber band. Um, those papers are always my favorite and this piece of cardboard that I cut this was uh, one that I cut it's already starting to get a little bit too much paint on it I'm going to try gel printing it with it today to make a reel we shall see if it still comes out nice but as you can see I it's gotten a lot of love so but it, part of it is because I just love the patterns that I get with it, especially on a deli paper. So that's what I'm going to do a couple of them today and uh, see if I can still get anything decent out of this. But you should really, you should try um, cutting the cardboard for um, texture, uh, texture stamps, make your own because um, you can get some really great results. Anyway, thank you for um, watching today. Uh, you know, I always say create, inspire, and share. And nobody's asked me why I say that. <laughs> I thought I'd give you a hint as to why I say it. So, because I hope that all of you create, obviously, but I want you to also inspire others to create by sharing like share your work with the world um, that even if you're not a serious artist you're not exhibiting in galleries or even in art centers uh, just share online share with each other we should all be inspired to create more because it just feeds the soul all right so that's it for today um, thank you very much again for watching and I'll see you next time take care Bye-bye.